State nursing a 1-0 lead with just a shade over 16 minutes left in the first half. Bomas, you were saying this is, uh, is this one of the first times you've seen Michigan State play this year, or yes. have you seen them play at all? No, I, I, well, I did watch the Michigan Dodgeball Cup on live stream, as many people make watching right now. But I have not seen them in person this year until today, and I have to admit it. They're, they're looking a lot better than uh, they have other points in uh, the history. So, so far, so good. So far, so good. Ryan, what did you see in that first point from Kent that they need to clean up to uh, rebound here with a point of their uh, own? They need to make better decisions on their throws. They're still a very young throwing team. They don't have a lot, a ton of power in their arms, and they threw too many catches. You'll know that you're going to see a lot of play along the sidelines. Both teams are fundamentally sound, so they won't typically charge right up the middle and invite fire from both sides. So you'll see this big gap right in the middle of the court. Um, expect that to widen up and to close up a little bit if there is a significant uh, change in uh, ball possession and the ability to charge. But for the most part, you're going to see a lot of play on the back sidelines and maybe a key to the cross court to the opposite corner. Yeah, we were talking earlier on the on the I think the first game broadcast that people tend to naturally gravitate toward one sideline or the other as you're practicing and playing. So typically you'll see the same players working the same sidelines point after point. The only counter or point I might add to that is that if you have a guy who's willing to stand and take fire, typically someone's very defensively sound and isn't afraid about taking one to the guy in the face, uh, have them march up to a balcony point to stay down right opposing fire. That kind of fearless, reckless <laughs> type reckless. of player. Mainly reckless, yes. I'm sure we've all played with people like that before. Michigan State doing a fantastic job so far at this point with some catches. This game even with some catches. You were commenting that they remind you a little bit of the uh, Ohio State teams of old with their ability to catch almost anything you throw their way. Yeah, it seems like that's their primary strategy as opposed to uh, attack and just trying to demoralize through 70, 75 mile an hour throws. To, tear, to wear out the other people on the team and just simply let the ball come to you, if you're able to do that consistently, that can help you, especially late in the weekend when you have those power teams who are tiring out. Yep. And meanwhile, you're still just sitting there taking the shots and bring catches and bring teammates back in. Yeah. Now, Ryan, who are some players that we should be watching out for from Kent State during this game? Uh, John Demharder. I forget his number at the moment. He is currently out. Um, he was on fire against Central Michigan. Made about three catches within 30 seconds. He was tearing them up. Um, another one is Alex something. He's wearing Alex the, something. He's wearing the red shorts. He's a freshman this year for Kent State. He has a very good arm. Is he in the back there in the red he shorts? Is in the back. All right. And if he sticks with dodgeball, he's going to have a very good arm in this league. And what would you say about Kent State's catching ability? Do they have a lot of catchers? I think they are very underrated in their catching. This year, last year we had a lot of people that graduated. And so people thought we were going to be really down. And more than half the team has been playing for more than three years so far. So they aren't that lacking experience as other teams have pegged them to be. Well, it looks like the uh, worm has turned a little bit here in this second point in Kent State. Is, uh, actually has a pretty sizable man advantage right now over Michigan State. I count uh, six Spartans. Yes. Six, is that right? Was he over the neutral zone line there? By about 18 inches. All right, yeah, that's a definite out. This is where those catching skills of Michigan State are going to be put to the test right here. See if they can rally with this big man advantage that Kent State's come out with. And a nice Evan, try to catch there by 23, Johnson. Evan Les has a very strong arm for Kent State. And what number is he? 11. 11. there by number 11 
takes out number zero. Do you know who that is, number zero? I do know who number zero is. His name is Dylan Brumfield, my future roommate. Oh, there you go. So I will give him a little, a little grief there for getting A little grief talk for that one. Meanwhile, the Penn State's run. Man, Brumfield just whittled down to 10 on 7. Yeah, with that catch, that's big. Another good throw by Bert DePero. Looks like it grazed the ball. Oh, uh, let's go. Is DePero the captain this year for Kent State? Bert is the captain this year. He will be the captain this year and next year. Gotcha. Number eight get grazed on the shirt right there or something? I think so. So that takes it down to five Michigan State players, so they are on the 10 count. And Bo, let's talk about how your strategy changes. How, how much difficult, much more difficult is it when you're on that 10 count as opposed to a 15? Well, you know that a team volley from the opposition's coming is just another one. The real question is whether you can bait one of your opponents to a lob or otherwise catch the ball right at you and try and get that, that, get that 15 second clock back. That's a ball's over on Kent State. The referee is conferring, Mr. Felix Peroni, refing this game. Over to wow. So a ball's over. Shot clock violation on Kent State. Kent State not too happy about it at all. I didn't see them. like no. I, I didn't feel like it was a shot clock. Usually you can tell because not a lot of They're action not, happening. It looks like they are dividing the balls up evenly. Oh, really? And restarting. No, no, no. Uh, Ended up recalled for four dodge balls. Sounds like they ate the whistle on that one. Okay. So whatever the call was going to be, did not end up happening. So we resume play with uh, looks like five and five, or is it six and four? I count. And shot clocks are back down to zero. Zero shot clocks. Four balls over there for Kent State. So I'm guessing six over here. Yep, six balls for Michigan State. Exactly, kill the clock with that much. And we are down to three lone Spartans against, I believe you said, 11 Kent State players left. Bomas. That group throw from Kent State. Got one of the Michigan State players out, so they are down to two players left in. We would show you the action happening below, but it would be almost a vertical drop with the camera. So we're going to show you over here in the corner, number 20 crouching down, trying to survive. What's the strategy right now if you're Michigan State and you're down to two players? With eight minutes, you're just trying to bait some into an easy catch to go along the issue. And if you can somehow get it down to five or four, at that point, you're thinking about possibly trying to kill, uh, kill out the clock and uh, going to the half of the one point lead. Yeah. 
it'd be amazing if they could hold out for another 7 minutes 45 seconds and bleed this clock. One player goes down. So Schneider goes out for MSU and there's a shot clock violation on Michigan State. So number 20 will be by his lonesome. Wasn't sure if the shot clock was called before he was tagged. So we will see here if Kent State can capitalize on this potential point ending swing. Somehow. One player kept the ball for Kent State. Got him when he wasn't paying attention. The old left behind. The old left behind, as they call it. Well, gentlemen, what do we think from that point? What did Kent State do to turn the game in their favor? For one, they kept Colin O'Brien out early, from what I could tell. I think he was out within two or three minutes of play beginning. He's been their main weapon as far as special teams go. So I think continue that. We'll be back in point three here in just a second.